Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to discuss about HTTP REPL. There's a lot of time you would want to test your web API and there is no easy way to test with a very lightweight components. Usually we end up using Postman, which is not very memory friendly and CPU friendly for testing something very small. So while trying to figure out a easy way to test it through a command prompt application, I found this HTTP REPL. HTTP REPL is a very lightweight cross-platform command line tool that is supported everywhere where .NET Core is supported because it is built on .NET Core. Now the HTTP REPL supports get, post, put, delete, patch, head, and options method. So any application that we have, any web application which supports any of these HTTP endpoint, we should be able to use HTTP REPL. Now for the purpose of testing this application, I created a out of box value controller which comes with default implementation. So it has a get which returns an array of values, array of strings. Then it has a get with the ID which returns a value. I'm just returning a string here. Then it has a post where I'm taking a value object and then just outputting the value that is incoming similarly for put and then finally a delete but in case of delete what i tried implementing is just reading the http header of authorization the reason for that is if we have a web api which is secured through some sort of authentication mechanism in most likelihood we would be using the http header authorization and it will be some sort of middleware which will be reading this authorization value and figure out if the user is authenticated to make a call. Now, instead of writing the whole middleware, I am just reading the value here and writing it out in console just to show that we can use any sort of header, including authorization header, as a part of the call. And for this value object, I have this record type, which is nothing but a string value. As simple as that. And this application is running. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to install the .NET REPL or .NET HTTP REPL. For that, we can use the .NET tools command. So you can go to a command prompt and we can say, .NET tool install hyphen G for installing globally Microsoft dot .NET dash HTTP REPL. Now I already installed this, so in my case it is going to say it is already installed. But if it is not, then it is just going to install this. Now, once we do that, what we can do is we can just do dash H to find out some help options. And as you can see here, when we do the H, it says we can just start with HTTP REPL base address and then different options. And base address is basically the initial address that we want the REPL 2.2. And then we have get, post, put, delete, patch, head options. These are the methods which are supported. And then this is where things get very interesting. Usually if you use any sort of common line application for accessing web API, you can just call individual endpoints, but here, you can essentially use things like ls and cd and this is where things get really interesting and really simple to use http REPL, which i'm going to show in a few minutes and then apart from that we can use some sort of preferences i'm going to show one of the preferences that we will be using so first let's start with 
setting up of the base URL. So for that, what I'll do is HTTP REPL. And here I'm going to give the URL of my application, which is HTTPS localhost 7283. And once I do that, you can see now it is pointing to my base URL. At this point in time, what I can do is I can do ls. And here what is going to happen is by default, when we do an HTTP REPL of the base URL, by default, it is going to find out the Swagger's default path. And if the default path if the application do not use the default path of the Swagger, we can use some preferences to do that. So we can use pref set and then we can say swagger dot search paths. And here we can provide the path that we want to search for the swagger. And this is going to replace the default behavior. Instead, the better option used to do is Instead of using swagger.search path, you can use add to search paths. So if you do swagger.add to search paths, in which case it will add additional search path to the default ones. Now in our case, since we used default Swagger implementation given by the .NET Core. And as you can see, it is already able to use in here using open API description as HTTPS localhost slash Swagger v1 Swagger.json because we are using default path. So now at this point, if we just do LS, it is going to get us what all this API supports based on the Swagger definition. Now we have our application inside of API. So if you can remember, it is API slash controller. So here what we can do is we can do CD API as if we are going into a folder structure. So now you can see how useful this can be. And then here again, we can do LS. And when we do ls, we can see it is showing values as one of the controller. So I can do cd and I can go to values. And for that, I can do val and just like we do any command prompt execution, if I do tab, it is going to show me the values and I can do values. Now I am inside slash API slash values. And here if I do ls, I can see it supports get and post as well as get put delete with an id so at this point if i just do a get you can see it is returning the response from the get it is returning http 1.0 200 okay and the values here now you can see how easy and powerful this REPL can be because we are accessing or we are calling the web api as if exploring a folder structure in a local file system. This is what is amazing and I was blown away by this way of accessing the API, which I did not see, at least in my experience, I have not seen with things like curl. So this is where I found it to be really, really helpful. Next we can do get one for calling the get with the parameter. And here, as expected, we can see value for ID one, the printout that I did in here, value for ID ID. So I pass one, so it is saying value for ID one. And then next thing we can do is, we want to do a post, but for doing post, what happens is when we try to do a post, we have to provide the body of the post. And for body of the post, we have to select an editor. So for that, what we can do is we can do pref set editor 
command dot default and we can provide the path of whatever editor we want here now for me i have already set it as c colon slash windows slash system32 and notepad.exe so i am not going to set it again so which means whenever i try to post a parameter or post a set of data into the web api it is going to open up notepad for me to set it there now one thing we can do is we can call the get command which is going to show the existing preferences for me i have not changed any of the default preference except the editor now if i do preference dot get you can see that these are all the default color preferences which i have not changed but for the editor it is showing that it is going to be notepad now let's try to do a post so for post what we are going to do is we'll make a post call and we have to give the content type so i can say header content type is equal to application slash json and when i enter it is going to open up a notepad and it is part of the ripple now i already tested it out that's why it came back with value equal to empty otherwise it will come back with a completely empty notepad and we have to provide our json here now here we can say test from ripple and we save it and close it as soon as we close it it is going to make a post call to the server and we can see here it is coming back as 200 okay now if i go back to the console output of the web api i should be seeing the text showing up there so if i open this you can see that it is showing post value value equal to test from repl this is printing out the entire json as we had in our code if you remember on post we are just saying post and we are posting the entire json same for put but for delete we are going to use header so let's now go and try the put and put it's going to be exactly the same the only difference is for put we have to pass a particular id because that's how the request is so let's say put we are doing put of one and then we run and similarly it's going to show up here we're going to say put for one close and it's coming back at 200 and if we go here we can see put value value equal to put for one exactly what we sent to the server this is the server response and then what we can do finally we want to test the delete now for delete what we can do is similar to put we can say we can say delete and then we are going to pass the id of the item that we want to delete so we can give here one as the id and then we want to pass a header so for the header we want to pass the authorization header so we can say dash h and here we can say authorization is equal to and let's say it's some sort of api key and we can pass it like that and here we will get response equal to 200 back and then here we can see auth token is api key now if we are not using api key and we want to send some sort of bearer token what we can do also is for the entire life cycle of this value we can set a header and for that we can do set header and here we can say authorization and for the authorization we can give the value of let's say if we are using some sort of token we can say bearer space token here so this is going to set up the header for the entire life cycle of this particular call and now if we do delete one it's still going to return 200 and if we go here 
we can see odd token is bearer token as expected. So as you can see using the repel here, we could achieve get, put, post and delete. These are the four commonly used method that we will always use passing a JSON for post and put in the request body as well as using authorization header in case the service is authenticated which will be almost always the case for public services. So as you can see using the REPL we can access web API as if we are accessing some sort of folder structure in a local PC and that is what amazed me in terms of using this product. I hope this video would be useful for you in future for testing out web API. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.